The sun dips in the sky and bathes the tips of the trees in a soft glow. My feet ache and protest with each step I take, and my legs are tight from all the walking. Finally, we come upon the perimeter of the village. Liana grins as she leads me through the gates. Here we are, Meadow Hill Village. I take the time to catch my breath and discreetly rest my burning muscles. Liana hardly seems affected by the long trek. Finally here, how is this close? <laughs> this, this one. I pull my arms into a stretch. Yeah, that was quite the journey. Liana masks a chuckle. A journey? I nod. This time, she can't quite hold back her laugh. Let's continue. We can rest at the inn tonight. As she resumes walking, I ignore my screaming legs and follow her. <laughs> the village is still bustling with people, even at this time of day. I suppose they're getting in their last errands before nightfall. For the most part, everyone seems to focus on their own tasks. They barely glance at Liana, but when their gazes are drawn to me, they don't look away. In fact, their steps slow and they crane their necks as we pass. Now I know how an animal feels at the zoo. <laughs> Liana overhears my muttering and watches the people around us. It's your clothes. They're very peculiar. I was wondering! What I'm wearing is normal where I'm from. Even though the stares are, are directed at me, Liana seems equally uncomfortable. Okay, new plan. Let's stop by the shops before they close. We don't need to draw attention to ourselves. I get to go clothes shopping! I instinctively pat my back pocket where I keep my wallet. I doubt they'll accept card here. Or dollars. I don't have any money. That's okay. I'll take care of it. Why, thank you. That's really generous of you. I like a girl who's independent. Don't make a big deal out of it. That's really generous of you. Yeah, I'm going with that. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's understandable given your circumstances. That's what I figured. That's why I'm not going to turn this opportunity down. <laughs> I'll pay you back once I can. Liana smiles and nods. Liana changes directions and leads me towards an adjacent street. There are rows of quaint shops lining both sides of the road. I read the signs as we walk by. Edwards Apothecary, Blackstone Forge, Dragon Scale Armory. See, I have to wonder if things like these are also references to anime or different things like that. Like, I immediately wonder if Edward is a reference, because that's Full Metal Alchemist, right? That's not quite Apothecary, but... I just have to wonder things like that. I don't know about the other two. Huh. What is it? I was just thinking how convenient it is that everything's in English here. English? I should have expected the question based on how our previous conversations have gone, but I'm still a little taken aback. It's what we're speaking now. We're speaking common. How did I know it would be common? <laughs> how did... Because I play Dungeons and Dragons. That's how. What? Liana pauses in front of a shop and peers inside. Satisfied, she motions for me to follow. Never mind. Come on in. We're here. I step into the shop and the first thing I notice is the overpoweringly musty smell of leather. It's not surprising considering the walls are lined with different types of leatherware. A small, elderly man emerges from the back. A pair of round glasses sits on his nose as an apron hangs around his neck. Welcome. Please, take a look around. Why, thank you, merchant man, I will. His smile falters when he notices me. Liana clears her throat. We're looking for a new wardrobe for my friend here. Yes, yes, of course. The shopkeeper blinks back to reality and resumes his pitch. Well, you've come to the right place. We tan our hides and stitch the pieces ourselves. You won't find any finer quality than here. Awesome. Liana smiles politely and strolls towards the selections. I check out two seemingly identical leather vests, both of which are marked at different prices. Is one a plus one? I really can't see the difference between the two. Maybe they both different stats. Hey, Liana. She turns around. Which one of these will increase my... Defense, Strength, Dexterity, Intelligence, Focus. I'm surprised they went with focus. Since things have been so D&D focused, I would have expected like wisdom and charisma and constitution to be here, but not focus. To my knowledge, I mean like maybe that is an attribute in a previous D&D, but I'm pretty sure it's not in 3.5 fourth edition or fifth edition. I haven't played anything prior to that, so a little confused. 
Um, but with these five, I'm going to go with intelligence, even though I assume that a leather vest, unless again, magically enhanced, wouldn't increase my intelligence. Then again, like, it wouldn't increase anything of this sort. Also, I'm aware that I didn't question defense, but defense just makes sense for leather, you know? Like, the attributes themselves are a stretch, but as far as attributes go, focus just was the bigger stretch. Anyway, but if it can increase an attribute, I'm gonna go with intelligence. Intelligence. She raises an eyebrow and nods, then she picks out a random shirt. This one does. Really? Leanna giggles. Did she just troll me? I guess I kind of deserved it. Very funny. So none of these raise any stats? Leanna gives me a weird look. Do your clothes where you come from raise stats? To save face, yes, yes they do. Only if you consider cool points to be a stat. She looks just as confused as before. Never mind. She smiles as we continue perusing. One by one, Leanna and I pick out my new outfit. Once all the pieces have been chosen, she goes to haggle with the shopkeeper. I tune out of their discussion and watch the people passing by. Their clothing are simple in design, meant to be more functional than aesthetic. To my surprise, everybody walks around armed. This village doesn't seem dangerous, but looks can be deceiving. I actually, I want to, before continuing, I want to jump really quickly back to that choosing between defense, strength, dexterity, intelligence, focus thing. I think that was all of them. Anyway, um, I did think it was weird. In fact, I talked about that, how clothing wouldn't normally enhance attributes. Defense was an obvious one, but aside from that, yeah. Um, however, I was thinking that it might have been, and it still might be, honestly, even with how she reacted, it still could be like this, but I was thinking it was like the beginning of Ace Academy, where you choose kind of what your specialization is. You know, like, are you the athletic one? Are you the intuitive one? Are you the charismatic one? You know, that kind of thing. Um, actually, intuitive might have been more the charismatic one, and it might have been, like, intelligent instead. I don't know. Anyway, I, I was thinking it might have been something like that, so I thought, if I could focus on anything, it would be that. Intelligence, but... Just wanted to talk about that. Why don't you get changed now? There's a space in the back to give you some privacy. All right, thank you. I nod and take the clothes from her. Once I've ensured privacy, I quickly get changed. Do I get to see it myself? Luckily, these clothes have pockets and I can just transfer everything over. I palm my wallet, deck of cards, and loose change. Next is my phone. I try to turn it on just to see if it will work, but it doesn't react. The battery must be dead. I get the feeling they don't have wall chargers here. <laughs> Shrugging it off, I slip my phone into my pocket too. When I emerge, Leanna gives me a, a once-over. How do I look? She grins and nods in satisfaction. Wow, look at you, just like a native. This look suits you. I match her grin. Thanks. Let's go find the inn now. She heads out of the shop and I follow her. Actually, maybe we can stop by the armory? She pauses and looks curiously at me. Armory? You want to get a weapon? Her question is careful, cautious. The goal is to blend in, right? It's weird that a person wearing leather armor is traveling unarmed. I look like a hostage or something. Hmm, you do have a point. Plus, it could come in handy. Yeah? Why do I not like the sound of that? Do you know how to use a weapon? Again, although her voice holds no hostility, I can sense her caution. I practiced kendo competitively. <laughs> she blinks. It's a type of sword fighting where I come from. I see. Leanna falls silent as she gazes out into the street. After an extended pause, she nods. Well, she was cool enough with it. We head to the forge where rows of blades, ranging from long swords to short daggers, hang from the wall. All of the blades look fairly plain, but the steel edges glint dangerously amidst the warm glow of the forge. Unlike the previous shopkeeper, the metalsmith ignores us as he pounds out a red-hot blade. Sparks jump from the clanging metal, reminding me of fireflies. Leanna lets me browse the swords. I reach for one that catches my eyes. As I gently remove it from the shelf, I miscalculate its weight and drop it. Oh no! The steel scratches the ground with a sharp screech. The metalsmith pauses in his work to glower a warning. Leanna looks on in shock. Careful! And she's like, ah! She's like fully reacting. I quickly write the sword back up and grip it tightly. Leanna now watches me with intrigue. Is this the first time you've held a sword? 
Practice ones only. I live, bro. Just minor miscalculation. I got it. Practice ones only. Nothing beyond wooden swords. I take a practice swing and fumble the sword. Luckily, I tighten my grip and get it under control. Leanna looks uneasy. I swing again and the movement flows naturally. As the sword cuts through the air with a sharp swing, I can't help but admire how smoothly it slices. This is high quality craftsmanship. Let's go with this one. As before, Leanna discusses with the shopkeeper. When she returns, I strap the sword to my belt. He's just going all in at this point. He's like, wow, I want to find my way home. Hey, can I get a sword? <laughs> We make one more stop to gather supplies for our- I mean, okay, so he did- he did offer his reasoning, um, the justification about, like, wanting to blend in and everything, but I think he just wanted a sword. <laughs> we make one more stop to gather supplies for our travel. By the time we're finished, the sun has set and darkness blankets the sky. The town is aglow with soft lights glint- yeah. The town is aglow with soft lights glint from within houses and the lampposts on the streets. I have no idea if I read that right. As we pass by a lamppost, I peek inside and see a small crystal shining brilliantly. Using the lights to guide us, we find the inn. Interesting. The crystal in the lamppost. I take a seat at one of the crude tables while Leanna talks to the innkeeper behind the bar. There are a scattering of other patrons, mostly men who sit alone, nursing a tankard of what I assume to be ale. I stifle a yawn. Now that I've had a chance to sit down, I feel the full weight of my fatigue. Luckily, Leanna returns and hands me a key. This is your room for the night. It's right next to mine. That's good. Thanks. She nods. They should be coming out with our dinner soon. Then we should get to sleep. We have an early start tomorrow. Just how early are we talking? My stomach grumbles in anticipation. <laughs> Sorry. Leanna smiles as she sits in the empty stool next to mine. How's Pongo this whole time? Every time Pongo's quiet, I have to wonder. Our meals arrive and I stare at the bowl before me. It's a goopy, thick stew and looks about as appetizing as dog food. But it smells pretty good. Uh, what is this? It's stew. What kind of stew? Rabbit. Oh, hmm. A brief image of a cute, fluffy bunny flashes across my eyes. Is something wrong? Is there normal stew? Meat is murder! Nope, all good. I only eat non-GMO, all-natural, vegan, certified, gluten-free, 100% whole grains, no trans fat, grass-fed, no preservative, <laughs> organic pasture meals. Um, I'm gonna... Nope, all good. That's the right one. I'm all about trying new foods. Nothing's wrong. This is fine. Thanks. I take a tentative bite of my stew. How is it? Amazing. Different. Adequate. Yeah, I'm gonna go... Yeah, it's, it's amazing. This is even better than I expected. Leanna grins as she digs in. I finish eating and Leanna cleans her bowl. Then the two of us head upstairs. She pauses in front of her room and I stop in front of mine. Good night. Good night. I'm about to enter my room when I hear a small voice. Polly? Looking down, I see the Pongo back at my feet. Now that I think about it, ever since we entered the village, he's been awfully silent. He has! Ah, oh, the game recognizes it as well! <laughs> Have you been following us this whole time or did you lose us and find us again? The pongo blinks twice and bounces. Boy, boy. Pongos aren't exactly welcomed everywhere. Ah. Uh, why is that? Well, they absorb the energy around them, including crystals which are used to light lampposts or other similar items. Mhm. Mm That's why he was trying to nibble my nose. Ah, I can see how that would be bad. I think this guy knew to stay out of sight once we came in here. What if someone sees him here? As long as he doesn't stray too close to a crystal, he'll be fine. People only make a fuss when it looks like their crystal might be drained. And that makes sense. Got it. She reaches towards the pongo. Do you want to sleep with me tonight? Poi! The pongo snuggles against my leg. <laughs> Leanna sighs. I thought as much. I'm sorry, I'm just so charming. She opens her door and flashes me one last smile. Sleep well. She disappears into her room. I open my door and step through. The pongo perks up. Let him in. I step away from the door and the pongo hops in. As I close the door behind him, he continues to hop around the room as if inspecting it. Yawning widely, I collapse onto the bed. The pongo continues to circle the room. Are you looking for a good place to sleep? Bye. 
He suddenly leaps up and lands on my bed. Then he bounces to the foot of the bed and wiggles himself a cozy nest by creating a small crater on top of the blanket. I can't help but grin at the little guy. <laughs> Good night, Pongo. Boy, boy. I roll over in bed, and it's not long before I'm fast asleep. Well, good. What a day. <laughs> the little transition music. My thought immediately went to Paper Mario. You're like, you'll hop into bed, it'll play a little music, go black, and then just like come back in. <laughs> that was fun. A knock on my door jolts me awake. I sit straight up in the bed and barely notice a tiny yelp as the pongo tumbles to the floor. Oh no! Hello? The knocking stops. It's Liana. Are you about ready? Yeah! <laughs> I rub my eyes and blink at the feeble rays of light outside. What time is it? It's past dawn. We need to get a move on if we want to make a good time. Dawn? There's no good reason anyone should be awake at this hour. <laughs> I attempt to lay back down in my bed when the knocking starts again. Alright, alright. I'll be there in a minute. The noise stops. I yawn and stretch, then notice the pongo on the floor. What are you doing on the floor, buddy? Weren't you sleeping on the bed? The pongo wiggles and shoots me an accusatory look. Poy, poy, poy. I glance at the slight indentation on my pillow and back at the blue mass on the floor. Sorry, I didn't mean to knock you off. He looks cautiously at me, then hops onto the bed and up onto my head. Poy, poy. He nips at my hair and then jiggles. I guess that means he's forgiven me. I push myself to my feet and begin getting dressed. Once I've grabbed all of my things, I push open the door and nearly collide with Liana. Oh! Are you ready to go? Yeah. Liana nods and leads the way out of the inn. I follow her through town as we head north. It's a lot quieter than when we first arrived as the town gradually begins to wake up. We don't run into too many people on the street. Although the shops aren't open yet, I can see the shopkeepers busy prepping for the day. Right before we reach the edge of town, a guard stops us. There's been heightened bandit activity reported on these roads. Oh dear. Leanna's brows crease. Are the roads closed? No, but until we get a handle on the bandit activity, we're advising everyone to stay in town. We can't stay. Where are you headed? We're headed to Illumia. The guard notices the sigil on Leanna's manipulator. You're a mage knight? She nods. As the guard turns his focus to me, I draw attention to the blade on my hip. He nods gruffly, then moves out of the way. Just be careful out there. Thanks, Akira. Thank you. She motions for me to follow her. Once we're back on the familiar dirt path, I take one last look at the meadow at Meadow Hill Village before refocusing on the road ahead of me. Our trek along the path is peaceful. The forest gradually awakens with birdsong and the scuttling of woodland animals. Having grown up in the city, the sounds of nature still startle me and I glance at every rustle of the leaves. <laughs> Leanna, though, seems unfazed. Her eyes routinely survey her surroundings. Suddenly, she freezes. I nearly bump into her. What the... Shh. I fall silent as she listens. When she speaks, her voice is a whisper. Did you hear that? I strain my ears, listening for anything out of place. Then I hear the voices among the trees. Bandits? A strangled scream pierces the air, scaring a flock of birds into flight. Someone might be in danger. Well, clearly we have to go help them then. Her previous caution abandoned, Leanna sprints towards the sound and I follow at her heels. We both take cover as the trees open up, revealing a man in a trench coat surrounded by five bandits. One more bandit lies motionless on the ground. Upon seeing their fallen comrade, the bandits all unsheathe their weapons. Three of them halb lo halb. Three of them hold long swords, and two of them point guns. Guns are a thing! The trench-coated man doesn't stir. His dark hair falls over his eyes, and I can't see his face. He won't get away from us this time. Take him out. The man pushes open his coat and draws two guns as the bandits converge. Liana sets her jaw. Stay here. As soon as the words fall from her lips, she races out from the trees. Her hair whips behind her and her white coattails billow in a graceful arc. She moves faster than any human, as if the air is pushing her forward instead of dragging her down. 
Her gauntlet hand clenches and a blue sphere glows, then disappears as she smashes her fist into the nearest bandit. He flies away from her and crashes against the tree before crumpling into a heap. A mage knight? She must be with him. Or she's after the bounty. Take her out too. The mysterious man fires a hail of purple blasts at the bandits, catching one of them in the chest. Leanna deflects the sword from another bandit with her own blade. I can't just sit here and do nothing. I have to help. Ignoring Leanna's command, I unsheathe my sword and charge into battle. First encounter, click the matching icon. The sword! Axe! Axe! Double! Shield! I win! I'm the winner! <laughs> Leanna breathes heavily as she surveys the bodies around her. She glances at me and the stranger who's still standing. Anyone hurt? I do a gentle pat down of myself and wince at my bruises. Nothing major. Leanna nods, then she fidgets with her manipulator. The man stays silent as he inspects his gun. Only one, though. He doesn't care for the other gun. Now that I have a better look at him, I realize that although his fierce scowl makes him seem tough, he doesn't look that much older than me. His hair has a habit of falling around his eyes, but as he pushes it back, I notice a long scar cut across one eye. Oh yeah, I think I see that now, yeah. I assumed that was like a strand of hair, but no. Once satisfied, he tucks his gun back into his belt and gets to his feet. It did say he had two guns though, right? I'm not wrong, okay. He nods at us. Thanks. Then he turns away. Wait! He pauses. Where are you headed? Why? There might be more bandits around. We should team up if we're going in the same direction. Safety in numbers. That's fair. He studies us in stony silence. Then his gaze flicks to her, her manipulator and he relaxes slightly. Where are you going? We're headed to Illumia. Me too. Leanna nods. You're from the Mage Guild? Yes. I'm Leanna. I'm Riz. Zack. Poi Poi. This is Pongo. <laughs> All of us glance at the little blue Pongo who seemingly popped out of nowhere. He's over there somewhere. I don't know. Maybe the webcam has him over there, but <laughs> just following their eyes. He's definitely not on the ground anymore. And if they're looking at him on my shoulder, my shoulder exists away from my body. <laughs> and, uh... This is our little friend. I see. Boy. See, because that's Zack looking at me, and that's Leanna looking at Pongo. So where is Pongo? The Pongo blinks at Zack, who stares him down. The Pongo bounces uncertainly. Boy. Zack's unblinking stare never wavers, so the Pongo scoots behind my leg for safety. Yeah, see, he's down there! <laughs> you were looking in the wrong place! Now that introductions are over, <laughs> it made me cough. Moving. Zach waits for us to collect our things, and once we're all set, we head back onto the road. I just don't understand because it seems like, given the other, like, the other extents to which they're animating, it seems like it would be an easy thing to make the eyes move downward. Why not just do that? You know, go through a little, I don't, I don't know. Leanne and I lead the way, the Pongo keeping pace with us while Zack hangs a few steps behind us. Ask about Zack's weapon. Ask about Leanna's, or Leanna, sorry, Leanna's speed. Ask how Zack knew she was in the Mage Guild. Well, I assume her outfit and like the gauntlet, maybe the sigil. I'm gonna ask about her speed. I mean, if this is anything like the first time we were ask, able to ask questions, we'll be able to ask everything, so I'm not too concerned. Leanna, I saw you during the fight. How are you able to move so fast? cast wind magic to manipulate my movements. Oh, so like putting on a speed buff. They're small adjustments, like shifting the draft to move me forward, or using a breeze to help lift me during jumps. Dang, that sounds awesome! She grins. The next time you're lagging behind, I'll use my wind to give you a little boost. That would be amazing. I can already imagine myself running like the wind. Leanna seems pleased by my reaction, though in reality it would take a long time to adjust to that kind of thing. So I wonder if it's actually going to happen and I'm going to fumble, or if it's just going to be awesome from the start. Ask about Zack's weapon. So, what type of gun is Zack carrying? You mean his discharger? What's a discharger? I hear a sound behind us. Zack raises an eyebrow when I turn to look at him. Did you hit your head or something? 
I very well might have. Leanna looks a little uncomfortable. He's not exactly from around here. Zack crosses his arms. I see. And that's all. There's a pause. So, a discharger? It's a weapon that uses crystal spheres to power it. So it is a gun. Maybe? The spheres are the bullets. Well, it's kind of the magazine in some sense because it's used to fire bullets. Or in this case, bolts of energy. Leanna looks uncertain. Although it made sense in my head, I can see why she might be confused. Well, yeah, because you're relating it to a gun, something you already understand, but she at this point doesn't have that other point of reference, so it makes sense. Never mind, I got it. Thanks. Sure. She smiles. I feel Zach's gaze on me, but his expression is hard to read. See, I would more relate the discharger, in this case, Zach's gun, to, you know, not so much like the guns that we have now with bullets and magazines and all that, but I would think instead to more of like a sci-fi sort of interpretation, like in Star Wars, where instead it's more like thermal energy packs or things like that. Because, you know, like you might have to replace it, but it's not strictly limited in the same way that bullets are, but I imagine with the crystals it's more once you use up all of the energy, then you might have to recharge that crystal or replace it with a new crystal, things like that. Um, so it seems like that's a slightly more accurate comparison, but I can definitely see why the main character wouldn't compare it to something like that. Uh, she smiles and feels like his gaze on me, but it's, his, his expression is hard to read. Ask Zack how he knew she was in... Ask how Zack knew she was in the Mage Guild, rather. How did Zack know you are in the Mage Guild? He saw my emblem. She lifts up her arm and points to the sigil and on her manipulator. What exactly does the Mage Guild do? We investigate any type of magical anomaly. The Mage Guild in Havengard is actually headquartered in Illumia. Hmm. Sort of like a police force? Liana furrows her brow. Police? Um, like how detectives go out into the field to solve mysteries. Um, a little like that. Okay. It now makes sense as to why both the Garden Meadow Hill Village and Zack relax after seeing Leon Liana's emblem. Crap, it's Liana, right? I keep wanting to say Liana. Well, it looks like that guard was telling the truth. There definitely are bandits on this road. Or were, at least. Yeah. There's something in her voice which makes me think she doesn't completely agree. What is it? It's just... well, for bandits, they were pretty well equipped. She stares hard at Zack, but doesn't react. Yeah, I'm also wondering if anyone was gonna bring up the fact that the bandits were there for a bounty. Maybe it'd be good to know why there's a bounty on Zack? What does that mean? Are they not bandits? Leanna continues to look at Zack. I'm not sure. They were bandits. <laughs> she looks sharply at Zack, obviously caught off guard. Sure. <laughs> that didn't sound too convincing. The subject drops, but I still feel a little uneasy. If those guys weren't bandits, then who were they? And why were they attacking Zack? The questions circle my mind as the conversation lulls to silence. Leanna leads the way, though Leanna leads the way, though she seems to have something on her mind. Zack trails from behind. He remains on heightened alert. That's incomplete. I finally have found something wrong with the proofreading. Unless you're gonna count never mind, because I'm pretty sure that should have a space, and pretty consistently they've been using it as one word, but at least it's been consistent. But here, haha! -ha, he remains on heightened alert. That's a complete sentence, and it's followed, or it's following a comma. So anyway. We traveled together for quite some time. I know no one cares about me. We traveled together for quite some time with no further interruptions. I can feel my legs start to burn from all the walking. Cue outro, go!